Good morning, or good afternoon, or good evening, depending where you are in the world. Thank you so much for tuning in, and thank you so much to all of you who uh, were here very, very early. For some, re for some reason, my computer defaulted to Central Time, so when I set up the stream, it thought it was 9 a.m. Pacific and 11 a.m. Central. I apologize for that, but thank you so much for being patient and leaving and then coming back. And uh, welcome, everybody. And it looks like we have uh, John is on, John Wallace, and some other moderators. I think Amber Key is lurking around, and uh, James is here, and I'm sure he will be around. I am coming to you live from the uh, Cichlid Shack in Tempe, Arizona, and I am in the secret section, the part that the public is not normally allowed to go to. This is a brand new breeding facility that was uh, created and uh, sound and video are good thank you so much for that because this is different Wi-Fi uh, I'm using a different microphone and it's a completely different setup so thank you for that uh, AV check there hey GP glad you're here my friend and I saw Jerry uh, around as well so a big shout out to the best moderators on YouTube they are awesome and uh, what you see behind me are these massive tubs. Like over my left shoulder, I have uh, baby baby hawks and uh, some eye biters. There's probably about a hundred fish in there. These tubs can have hundreds of, of, uh, of fish in them. They're very very uh, heavily filtered. And uh, I turned off the airlines, but you see the airlines up here. There's like hundreds and hundreds of airlines that are being run by one pump. I'm gonna cover that with you more in a minute, but it's running like hundreds of uh, pumps throughout the facility. And <clears throat> I'm sort of stuck in this one station uh, because of just the cabling and everything else. I didn't, I didn't wanna uh, do this live, stream, this live stream with my cell phone where, where I could have moved around. So what I did is yesterday, I made a special video for you folks and uh, it's gonna give you a walkthrough not just uh, the retail section a few doors down, but also through this through this facility here. I am uh, I'm running on fumes. I, I have a giant coffee, and <laughs> for cichlids and coffee, we were up till 3 a.m. last night. Uh, fish orders arrive at all, all at all hours, and you go well. Okay, look, the flight is delayed. The the order of fish. I mean, we're talking like right 20 boxes of fish, right? Uh, they're coming in, but instead of 7 p.m., it's coming at 10. Well, you can't leave the fish overnight. So you go and get the fish, and then you go, well, okay, 10 o'clock, that's not bad. Well, you have to unpack. You, ha you have to acclimate, right? You have to then distribute to the, to, you know, to, to the QT tanks and uh, to the quarantine tanks. And uh, anyway, long story short, I was asleep um, at 3 a.m. after James and, and uh, his right-hand man, Zach, were able to wrap things up. And uh, that is the life of a, uh, of a cichlid, cichlid distributor. This is a lot more than cichlids. You're gonna see in the video, uh, James has expanded considerably. He's got a lot of stuff going on here that I'm gonna share with you. And uh, let's take a quick look here at, uh, let's take a very quick look at the chat, but let, let's first, Let's first just uh, do the, uh, the official start. What do you say? If you're new to my channel, please be sure to hit that sub button and uh, the bell and the thumbs up. Let YouTube know that something good's going on. We can keep growing. We've been growing real steady. We haven't like blown up like some channels, but uh, certainly it's been steady growth and uh, we're heading for 50,000. That's gonna be a great milestone. I appreciate all of you that have subscribed. The, um, a quick shout out, of course, to James and the Cichlid Shack for having me here and uh, for helping to sponsor the channel. And also a very big shout out 
to all of you who have uh, supported the channel by becoming Patreons. You can see the names on the screen there. These are the Patreon members. Information on how to become a Patreon is uh, usually included under my videos. Uh, for those of you who use Amazon, use this link to get to Amazon and no matter where you go, whether it's my store or anywhere on Amazon, it gives a little credit to the channel without increasing your price. So that's awesome. Awesome way to support the channel. Also visit Teespring for uh, t-shirts and uh, hoodies and all kinds of stuff. And again, another great way to support the channel. So that's the end of commercials. Let's go ahead and get rid of this here. Thank you, Patreons. You guys are awesome. You guys and gals, all of you really are the best. And uh, <clears throat> let's take a quick look here at what's going on. I'm going to switch over and look at the chat. And Robert Egan is in the house. Hello, Robert. I'm glad you're here. And Chris G. Hey, Chris G. Glad you're here as well. Solar King Ronnie. Hey, Solar King Ronnie. How are you? Chris, let's see. Amber Key. I gave you a shout out. Mujahid. The Magnificent. Muhajid the Magnificent. <laughs> it sounds like a magic act. Like you're going to uh, make somebody disappear or saw somebody in half or something. Pull a rabbit out of your hat. Let's see here. David. Hey, David. David is here. Sanger and Tracy H. as well. More people are coming on to the stream. That's good. Angelo Mili. Go blue. Go blue? <laughs> I hope that means you're a Dodger fan. That's what I hope that means. You know, uh, Arizona's kind of funny, and it was a little bit confusing in the beginning because Arizona does not change with uh, daylight savings time. For those of you in Europe and other places, I don't know if you do this, but, you know, we uh, spring in the spring, we go forward. In the fall, we fall back, and, um, you know, the whole country changes its time. It's, um, it's kind of annoying, but... Um, but here in Arizona, they don't change. So instead of being on mountain time, they are the same time as Pacific time. So after we figured that out, <laughs> oh man. I used to be really good with time zones. I used to travel a lot, but uh, not so much recently. Australia in the house. Asinta Busher. Hey, Asinta. Good to see you. Buenas tardes. Brian Hahn is in the house. Tracy H. as well. Parrots laid eggs. Congratulations. Congratulations, Tracy. Did you ever see the movie City Slickers? When uh, Billy Crystal helped deliver a, a baby calf and Jack Palance looks at him and says, she's got your eyes. <laughs> hey, someone did a super chat. Thank you so much for that. Always appreciate Robert Egan. Thank you so much for the 300 gallon. I have the sump in place, now I just got to finish the plumbing, and then we're going to go ahead and fill that thing with water, and uh, James has almost convinced me, almost convinced me. Uh, in another video, you're going to see some of the fish that were delivered, and uh, big bucononos, and, and uh, just some gorgeous fish, and big ones, and uh, anyway, he almost has me convinced to... Uh, Use that 300 gallon for African cichlids, which means that the which means that the South Americans and Centrals will go over over to the 210, which is that's a lot of room. That's a big tank, and uh, the 90, I guess, would be for more of the peaceful South Americans. Or we were talking more about discus yesterday, so it's nothing but fun. But thank you for that, Robert. Much appreciated. NJW, hi from the UK. Hey, say hi to my um, future daughter-in-law, who's in London. And, of course, she gets together every weekend with my son in Dublin, who they're, uh, they're working over there now. Uh, question for you. When you have time, I have a 66-gallon I would like to set up for peas. I'm thinking six peacocks. Would it work this size? Uh, Brett, I would... Um, uh, I'd put more than that. Peacocks can be crazy. I'd spread, I'd spread out the aggression, put a couple nice rocks in there, and uh, maybe put 15, maybe 15 of them, maybe, uh, maybe even a few more. But uh, you, know, you want to spread out the aggression, put a, put a canister, maybe two canisters, put a hang on back, filter the heck out of it. And, uh, but then, 
start setting up your, some change aside because you're going to want a six foot tank. I hope that helps. And uh, I've got some great videos coming out in the future for you. One of them is going to be a trip we made to a wholesaler. There are organizations behind the scenes that none of us are aware of. We visited one that provides uh, supplies, aquarium supplies, to over 2,000 retail outlets in the United, in the United States. And it, imagine a Home Depot or a Lowe's, just a big box, giant hardware store that's full of every goodie you can imagine related to aquariums. From uh, giant tubs of Seachem Prime to little dispensers to uh, every type of media, every type of filter, every CSA filter was there, every Aqu Aquion filter, every, every Aquatop, everything you can imagine uh, was in this warehouse. And I did a quick walkthrough of that. We're also going to be going to a shop called Ocean Floor, which is sort of an aquarium store slash amusement park. So we're going to be going, uh, we're going to be taking a few field trips here before I leave, and I'll be gathering up a lot of uh, video content to share with you. Uh, Eddie, I will have fun today. I've been having fun. I'm, I'm running on fumes uh, between the uh, 3.30 wake up for the flight out here, and then the, um, and then the late nights. It's been a... Uh, it, 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 but it's been a lot of fun. It's been a lot of fun. Uh, Cameron Hasid, who has the best selection of haps um, in LA? You know, I, 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 I think um, I'll get I'll, I'll get your name. I'll get your name. I mean, naturally, I'd say order from from James right here at the Cichlid Shack. But um, hit me up at ben.o.cichlid, ben.o.cichlid. And if you want to just go where you can drive somewhere, um, I have uh, a shop down in, in Santa Ana. Santa Ana, great, has, has great stuff and a real good guy. And um, just hit me up on an email. I'll get you some information. All right, let's see here. Carp, carpet man? Well, you know, Carpet Man, he says that his aquarium is running hotter than the room and hotter than the setting of the, of the, um, of the heaters. You know, what you have going on, I bet you, is your equipment. Either, your, either your, your heaters are off. Now, I did a video a while back called Heaters or Liars because um, I had heaters that were, that were saying that they were on the target temperature, but yet they were three, three degrees, four degrees off in, another, in a different direction. So um, the cobalt heaters, they claim that they're within a half degree. So uh, what you have to do is ideally, ideally, get yourself a, a controller, like a true temp controller, and uh, calibrate the controller with a digital thermometer, and then use that as your, as your measurement. Because the heater, heaters will lie, and your heaters are probably off. You might have them set at 80, but they're, they're actually heating to 84. So the only way to do that is to calibrate. And so you have to use something like a reliable uh, digital thermometer. I think Taylor, Taylor makes some that are pretty inexpensive. You can pick them up on, on, uh, at my Amazon store, uh, amazon.com slash shop slash Ben O'Chart. You know, and look for the Taylor digital thermometer and, and calibrate because you're either, either your heater's off uh, or I guess your thermometer could be off as well but also uh, your equipment, like canisters. Canisters are, produce a lot of heat. And when that water goes flying by the, the, the pump, the motor, it, it, it warms up. My 210, the, the 210 heaters, and I have an 800 watt in the tank and a 500, I think, in the sump. Those heaters never go on because the uh, FX6 and the, and the she say pumps they're warming the water. They're warming up the water. So keep that in mind. Your equipment can do that. All right. Let's see here. So I want to play this special video for you. Let's go ahead. What do you say we get into that? And... It's been like a hundred degrees out here, really, really hot. 
and you'll uh, you'll see the look of uh, sweat and, and desperation on my face in this video. <laughs> but let's go ahead and uh, I'm going to go ahead and play it for you. All right, grab some popcorn, my friends, and let's go ahead and play this video. Hello, friends. Ben Ochart here. How are you? You know, for several days, what I've done is I've immersed myself into the life of uh, of a fish shop, a fish shop owner, and I've uh, been hanging around with uh, with James and his crew here at the uh, at the Cichlid Shack. You can see the the sign here. Once you go shack, you don't go back. So I've uh, immersed myself in it and I'm going to show you some of the behind the scenes some uh, there's a lot more I've got uh, I've got about 300 clips that I need to edit and prepare for you but this is going to give you an idea of what's going on let's start by going into this section which is the older section of the shop and then we're going to go over to the part that the public never sees all right the back behind the scenes so let's start right here in uh, and go in the front door. So here's what you see when you first come in. And they have uh, some extreme food up here. And there's some, some aquarium co-op products over here. And some general, general kind of products that you'd see in, in a lot of shops. Let's take a look here. Here are some of the, uh, some of the aquariums. He had a giant, he had a giant aquarium here and this is going to be replaced. You'll see it in the back. It's going to be replaced with another tank. It's going to be massive, uh, 300 plus gallons, I think. There's a lot more than cichlids here, and I'll show, I'll show to you. See here, there's plants. So there's still a lot of plants now. Here's some roseline sharks. Very pretty fish. One of my favorite fish, actually, roseline sharks. And uh, they've been picking up orders and, and bringing them in and setting them up and we've made several trips to the airport yesterday and today. There's another one coming in tonight at 7 p.m. So they'll be unpacking fish until midnight, maybe one in the morning. And so they have a lot of stuff coming in. And here you have a lot of community tank, community fish. Here's a long fin, long fin pleco. That's a pretty little guy. A lot of water filtration systems, water change systems. Uh, James' father helped him to engineer these things. Every tank operates independently in its water change systems. No tank mixes water with another tank. And uh, here's some uh, here's some Julichromis. I'm going to give you a real quick walkthrough here because I have so much more material that I'll be providing you with skunk loaches and a lot of a, a pistogramma they become really really popular and so you'll see a lot of apistos here in the shop here's some beautiful little fish here's some new arrivals So this is row row number two, and you have a lot of your smaller fish, some angels. Those look like some of those koi angels. Those are my favorite. And you've got some guppies, fancy guppies, some gold barbs and gold gourmies here. Cherry barbs and pearl gourmies. Very pretty fish. More small guppies. Some endlers are in there. Little guppies, uh, there's some apistos in here too. Boy, look at that guppy, wow. A lot going on here. We can spend two hours together going over all of it. Some calvis, looks like calvis up in here. Hiding up behind the filters. A lot of these fish are skittish, they just arrived. But let's go around the corner here. These are all the independent water flow systems you see here. These are the independent water chain systems. And when he, boy, when, when the timers go off, these things are like floodgates. 
and the waters are, and then the tanks fill back up again. Here we have a, um, a tank with knee neolamp prologues, multifasciatus. I guess these are what you'd call the Shelleys. Some real nice little plecos in there too. Let's keep moving. Lot to see, a little bit of time. All right, this guy is so cool. There's some type of a flower horn. Let's get some beautiful flower horns up here. This guy is so, the nuchal on that guy. Wow, some up here. These are not sold, very pretty. These go for $100, $110 each. Beautiful markings. More plants, and these are the new arrivals. These just came in, I helped to pull the bags out of the boxes. And these are uh, Watley. These are uh, from the famous Watley breeding program. And they are what you call no pepper, no pepper discus. That means that they don't get those black dots. In the back, there's a bunch of Congo tetras. Can you see them? Let's see if I maybe catch them on a bunch of Congos back there. I guess they're good, uh, good dither fish, good fish for for discus to be with. But anyway, nice little plant and arrangement. A few little assassin snails. Anyway, those guys just just arrived. Now we're getting into some uh, some cichlids. Little Eureka Red. Beautiful fish. Roughly about 50 bucks for a guy like that. Got some Regal Blues down here. Hard to see him with the lighting. There's a whole batch of albino strawberries that just, just were added to the tank. I'm talking like a minute ago. And they're just kind of getting the lay of the land. Check to see how other fish react to them before they get released into the tank. Albino strawberry peacocks. He's still unbagging. He's still bagging. He's still out back taking things out of bags. And it's gonna be an all-nighter. Some beautiful OBs. Some big, beautiful blue neons. Some big, beautiful blue neons up there. I think those are also new arrivals. Kobu Regal Blue Peacocks. Sunshine Peacocks. Good looking fish. Some blue dragon bloods and regular dragon bloods. Again, these were just unbagged unboxed. I'll be showing you the unboxing video of these fish. Some German Reds. Some big Kowingis up here. For those of you familiar with my tank, you know my Kowingi is a beast. Look at that guy. Kowingi. Very good looking cichlid. Venusis up here. Good size Venusis. Got some more fish that were just added. Some red Empress, boy, they're getting pretty worked up. Living Stone Eye. Don't want to startle them too much. These look like beautiful uh, Lethronops, Marginatus, Red Fins. Beautiful. 
Protomelis tangerine tigers, young tangerine tigers. For those of you who know my tank, you know I've got a beautiful tangerine tiger. It's from this strain. Beautiful fish. And we got some Protomelis hertes and marginatus up here. Wow. And on this side, more Protomelis. Stavini Imperial Blue Golds. Look at that. Blue Golds. And Protomelis Red Empress. These are older, larger, more colored up Red Empresses. Look at that. Beautiful. Here we have some assorted Mabuna, ranging in price from $13 to $17. See up here. Some of these are absolute beauties. Some of my favorite fish here in the shop, believe it or not, are these Tiger Oscars. He's got a couple really nice specimens of Tiger Oscars up here. Look at that guy. Really nice Tiger Oscars. Yeah, you get the uh, ceiling lights reflecting on the aquarium, makes it almost impossible to see, but you also have some albinos in there. And one thing I love about uh, this one over here, this is called a lemon. And some of these are like lemon albino Oscars, and they have like a black fringe on the, on the fins. You can see there on the tail. Really pretty. I think if I wanted an Oscar, if I could keep one right now, it would be a red, one of these uh, Tiger Oscars and certainly one of those uh, with that lemon with the black fringe. Look at this cute little uh, discus here. It's adorable. Just kind of hanging out with a bunch of uh, Harlequin Resboras. I guess that's a real real good fish to keep with a discus, real calm. You also have a few um, Congo tetras in there. Some Congo tetras, nice piece of driftwood with a little bit of anubias. And a great collection of plecos. Barely see them under there, but good looking plecos. Some rams, some more discus. Look at the size of this guy. That's a big discus. Beautiful fish. Over here we have some uh, pretty interesting fish. We have a um, Mesonata festivus. I guess it's called a festivum. Festivum. Or festivum? How do you pronounce that? Well, for 20 bucks you can take one home. Very pretty fish. And you also have some. Um, Uarus, some Uarus in here. The fish that made Joey, the king of DIY famous, Uarus. And some very interesting high fin cats. Look at that guy. Crazy looking fish. A few of them in there. One of my favorite tanks just because of the variety. Even looks like there's a flag tail back there. I think it's ginormous. Blood parrots and electric blue acaras here at the top. A friend of mine in uh, Nashville is going to be bringing me a very large electric blue acara. Little, good little parrots. And we have some more lethronops right here. Oculatus, Lethernops Oculatus. Of course, I have one of these that is absolutely stunning. You've seen them in my videos. These go for $54.99. Big spot. Auto Pharynx, big spot. All right, let's go around the corner. This is the receiving area. When fish first arrive, they're floated. They're floated in, in the tub back here, I'll show you. 
Every aquarium in the shop has the same temperature. It's all regulated by a uh, main heating unit. So this tub is where new fish are acclimated to the temperature. We have another one here. This one is full of giant hawks. Uh, not just hawks. We also have a fish there with an orange blaze as well. They use these uh, giant nets. Something you'd see in uh, Deadliest deadliest Catch, Red Spotted Severums. Let's go over to the other side. This is a uh, tub, and you're not going to be able to see much because of the bubbles. But this is a tub that has the fish that James is growing out for his personal gigantic tank that's going to be at the front of the shop. So you really can't see them, but they're Take my word for it, they're very large and very colorful, so. <laughs> All right, let's get over to the front. Did I not show you the uh, bicolors? Bicolor 500s? Look at those guys. Bicolor 500s. He's just arrived, and we have some beautiful flame tails. You see, they're adding some to the tank right now, but some flame tails here that look pretty darn good. They're being shy, hiding behind these massive, behind these massive sponges the size of basketballs. Let's go back out into the blazing Phoenix sunshine. And a few doors down, unbeknownst to the public, is the, uh, is the part of the cichlid shack that the public doesn't see. Let's go take a look in there. This is Zach, an exhausted Zach, and an exhausted James, <laughs> wet and exhausted from dealing with fish. This has been my office the last few days. <laughs> and so we're going to end up right here, but we're going to go in that way. We just found out the last shipment of the day is going to be delayed, so they're not getting home till what? 1 a.m. That's the way by an hour and 20 minutes right now, so we're going to one or two now. Wow. One of the things you don't see when you uh, buy fish is what actually is involved in getting your hands on fish to be able to offer to the public. And part of what's involved is, of course, getting them from the breeder or the source. And um, and these, these shipments come in all day long, so not only are they servicing walk-in clients at the shop, but they're also dealing with um, delivery issues and delays, and you definitely do not want to leave fish at the airport for any longer than you than they need to be. But what, where we are right now is we are in a facility that was just built out by by James and uh, with some help from his father and of course Zach and the rest of his team. And let me show you some of uh, what we have going on here. Right off the bat, you'll see three very large tubs and these are uh, grow-out tubs. So he'll have uh, fry that go in here, and after several months of being in this highly filtered, uh, highly filtered tub, they, they put on great size, and then they're ready to move to the shop to sell. These are some uh, filters that were designed that were designed by James, and uh, real simple. Water gets pumped up and goes through filter media and then pours back into into the uh, into the tank. You can see here there's a simple pipe that was drilled and is dumping water through through floss. 
the water and everything you see, including the tanks in the main shop and the water here, this water gets turned over several times a day. And what you'll see up here are airlines. And then there are also uh, water lines that come in. And uh, this is draining, right? That's draining, going out through here. And then you have a line here that ref refills. So these things are being turned over several times a day, like entire volume, it's amazing. And look at these tubs here. Massive tubs. There's an aquarium somebody's coming to pick up, 210 gallons. Now, look it up here, these airlines. The black ones are water that are that is pouring into the tanks while the tanks drain through uh, an overflow. There's an overflow in each one of the tanks. You can see it right here. That's a that's an overflow right there. And so again, the tanks are getting several. Several tank pools are turned over every day, so these, these fish are in very, very fresh water. I think we have a variety of uh, African cichlids here. The nets that are being used are dipped in a uh, bleach solution between uses and then dipped in a, uh, in a um, bucket that has prime or safe in it. So that way they're preventing cross contamination from occurring. So there are Eureka Reds in here and some Jakes, some OBs. All of these uh, tanks and tubs are using these aquarium co-op feeders. See how they work here. I just did a review on them, on the one by a Chinese company. drops a little, just spins and then drops, drops a little food out. You see this, you open this middle one to refill it. This is how you refill it. And then you set this, this section here, you set that to determine how much food you want to come out. You leave a slot open right there. And so these are, are, are uh, spinning several times a day. Some OBs. Boy, look at that that red orange OB right there. That's a beauty. OB, peacock, and some of these are of the of the Skittles variety. You can't see it under this lighting. These are all grow out tubs. And uh, Here's some phoenixes. Boy, look at the color on that guy. Gorgeous. These tanks you can see here, they're, they're actually having water drain as we talk. So water is dumping out and no tank will exchange water with any other tank. Look at this Turkish breeding group. Look at this, the, this is the, the male. This, that's the stud right there. Look at the fins. The fins on that guy. That's a stunning fish right there. Absolutely beautiful. So this is just one small portion of the new area. He put in a state-of-the-art dehumidifier. And this is one of two of them that are here. Need some shipping boxes? He's got a few of them. Here's one of the older tanks, full of star sapphires. Look at that guy. Beautiful. One of my favorite fish. I plan on getting one again. Maduka white lips. There's a whole group of them in here. Maduka white lips. And he doesn't sell from this side. These are only fish that uh, are being either bred, part of a breeding group, or they're being grown out. 
more tubs. Each tub with its own independent water chain system. There's some OB sunshines. Look at the yellow on those guys. Beautiful. You got some more phoenixes here. Some more skittles with more yellow and orange in them. Look at that guy. He knows he's a stud. We have some a German red group here. Look at the red on this guy. Beautiful. That face, look at that. Almost looks like a like a ruby red. Really pretty. Dragon bloods. Some fluorescent. Fluorescent fry growing out. You've got three inch OBs here. I mean, every one of these tubs has, has a label on it. Phoenix. Mysterious OB. Just can go on and on here, but there's more rows. Take a look at that. Look at all those airlines. And they're all being run. All these airlines are being run by this unit right here. Very quiet. That's controlling all of the air for everything on this side. And this is the water chain system over here, designed by um, James's father. Look at that, how elegant that is. Pipes running across, absolutely perfect. And these are like uh, what would control sprinklers going off on timers. There's more tubs down this way. There's more tubs down this way. And uh, here's the stand for that new aquarium that's gonna be going on in the front. It's gonna be going in the front. Stand and canopy. And Go all the way to the back here of the new section. Oh, what are these guys? Very cute. More OBs. Look at the look at the blaze on that guy. I can catch catch him on the camera. Here's some more tubs. These tubs have uh, F1, Buco yellow, Buco chromos yellow. F1, and this tub has F1 Malawi eye biters. And those are just little, little uh, gr grow outs. And then we go into another section, and here we have Tetrastigma. You know my Tetrastigma, beauty. And he came from this stock, Tetrastigma. Absolutely gorgeous fish and some super red empresses that are being grown out right here. Let's keep moving. Taking too much time. I just get caught up in this. All right, four more giant tubs. And uh, Lethronop Gold Harbor Monkey Bay. Very sought after Lethronops right here. Absolute beautiful fish, and then some sunburst. Priari, Priari, sunbursts. Look at the color on that with the blue in the dorsal. Very pretty. These tubs have fry, some long nose fry, and some protomelus, protomelus fry here. VC tens. Looks so like they just got some in. Show those guys. Woo! VC tens being grown out. And uh, OB. But that's not all.
Pilonatus, Tanzania breeding group. They call this fish also the Insignus. It's got to be the stud right there. Then maybe you have a uh, subdominant male in there somewhere. Beautiful. Beautiful coloration. Look at that belly. Gorgeous face. Some Xerox OBs. Nice little blaze. And some Taiwan reefs in this tub. Taiwan reefs. I can get to focus. Taiwan reefs. And then you've got some absolutely gorgeous uh, German strain Xerox. Now, German strain Xerox are the ones that have the blaze that goes all the way from the upper lip, all the way across the back to the tail. And they are just stunning. German strain Xerox. This tank's going through a little bit of a water change, as are the, some other ones here. Thousands of gallons in tubs containing thousands of fish fry that are being grown out. Pseudotropius breeding group. Pseudotropius flavus. And then we have an F1 Malawi gar breeding group. You know my gar. It's a beautiful, big, beautiful fish. And this is the, uh, the line that he came from. These are being grown out, and when they color up, they'll be ready to sell. They start to show some color. They're already showing great size. Big stud in there. All right, let's go around. We have more tubs here. Taiwan, a Taiwan reef tub. Malawi Gar Tub. Some more tanks ready for arrival. Again, they have some arrivals coming tonight. And uh, another dehumidifier unit. Just a massive dehumidifier. Things run 24 7. More tanks ready and available to accept fish. Getting a little bit loud in here. I hope you can hear me. And we have some tanks here with fry, as well as tumblers. See little tumblers here with some wigglers in them. See the air going into the tumblers. Milo fry. You can see them. Very cute. More Milo's. And here's some dragon blood fry. Look, check these guys out. There's a dragon blood fry. Very pretty. So we've gone the full circle, and this is where you end up here in the lounge area. And this is where uh, where people take their breaks, especially on long days like today, where they're going to be going until the uh, until the crack of dawn, getting in new shipments. So there's your walkthrough. I hope you enjoyed that, and watch for the video where I go into more detail about what's going on here, and also my visit to the airport and my visit to uh, H2O, a supplier. And we're also going to be visiting a very large fish store here in the area. I think it's called Ocean. We can get the uh, behind the scenes first hand account of what it's like to keep this operation running. So there you have it. So there you have it. What do you think? Were you as impressed as I was? I mean, this is like crazy back here. I mean, it's just amazing. 
and everywhere you uh, everywhere you look, it's like a ton of your favorite fish. And um, the section we're in right here is not open to the public, and it's not actually even sold. They're being grown out and and made nice and big and colorful and ready for the public. The ones that are actually on display are the ones that were in the first part of the video, and you can see how big and hefty those are. Last night, uh, or yesterday afternoon rather, in our first trip to the airport, there were two, two or three trips to the airport uh, to uh, Southwest and uh, pick up. He got, he got in uh, eye biters and bu bucanonos and just a whole variety. These fish were like this, massive fish. Some of them were even too big to put into my 210. Uh, they're just massive, uh, beautiful fish. And um, at any rate, it made me start thinking, okay, now how can I get some fish onto the plane? <laughs> oh my goodness. So yes, this was like a big candy store. And um, let's take a look here at what you folks have been saying. Or I'll tell you what, if you have any questions, if you have any questions, why don't you go ahead and ask them now, and uh, and I'll and I'll try to uh, I'll try and answer them. And top notch, nice, yeah, yeah, John, everything here is is uh, is is good, is really really strong and pristine. And I, I know some of the suppliers uh, that he uses with with the fish, and they are best best in the industry uh, some of them don't even want to be mentioned because they're they they don't want people calling them about uh, you know getting fish from them because they only want to deal with with retail outlets but um, they're just they're just the, the, the top the top two percent in the country uh, of suppliers and they send fish that are already fully colored very often and large and what he has here what what he has behind me are, uh, he'll take a couple F1, right, second generation, like right out of Lake Malawi, uh, and then and then their offspring are called F1, right? And he'll get an F1 uh, breeding group, and they'll start producing and going into those tumblers, and then he starts filling up these tubs and growing them out. Now, imagine in these tubs, with the water in the tub turning over a couple times a day, and, and, and being fed very high quality, extreme, uh, several times a day. I mean, these, these, these fish put on, they put on size real, real quick. And uh, <clears throat> anyway, <clears throat> it's just, it's, 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 it's just amazing. Uh, GP made a comment about foods. Yes, I, I do. Um, I do use a combination of foods. I use uh, extreme is, I, I, has become sort of my core food, uh, but I also put some Piscine energetics in there. And of course, you know, I'm using Sarah. And I'll tell you something about Sarah. I have an eye biter that uh, has always been a little bit kind of kind of touch and go, and he looks like he's wasting away, but he's eating well and he's active, and then he gets kind of fills out a little, and then he's always kind of touch and go. But when I feed Sarah for a couple days, he changes, and his poops are different. His poops actually are different. Now remember when when I spoke with the folks from Sarah, based on their scientists, when a fish is healthy. It, it actually doesn't have long stringy poops, doesn't have long white poops or translucent poop. The poop should be short and bulky and break off. Short, bulky, break off. Short, bulky, break off. Not these long stringy uh, poops. He's, he's, they say that, that, that's not a good sign. It's, the fish is actually pooping out perhaps some of, the, uh, some of the mucus or slime in their own intestinal tract. So um, I noticed that, that, that it changes uh, it changes their poop when I go straight Sarah. Now that being said, even the rep from Sarah said that you you want a combination, a combination of, of foods, uh, and he was humble enough and honest enough uh, to admit that no no company, even a company like Sarah with 50 years of scientific research, uh, feels that they have covered every possible angle. So, um, so what they, what they, even they recommend, yeah, throw some extra stuff in there. So get, go get some frozen food, give them some treats, South American and, um, uh, you know, Central American cichlids, throw some, you know, or, or community tank, throw some bloodworms in there, um, 
you know, some cyclops, things like that. Throw some some frozen krill um, in, into your into your aquarium every now and then for your African cichlids, and um, you know, mix it up, really mix it up. And I, I think that's going to give you the full spectrum that you need. So um, anyway, don't get me going on food. I'll go forever. So <clears throat> 72 likes. Hey, not bad. 72 likes. And almost 20 bucks in Super Chats. Thank you, everybody. You folks are awesome. And what does uh, James Largo also feed? I think he's extreme. I think he's extreme and um, mostly extreme. That's what I see. Uh, you notice the, the aquarium co-op feeders, right? I think that's what's in the feeders is extreme pellets. I didn't see flakes in any of the feeders. And um, Chris, Chris G., he offers a variety of sizes. And your price will be often uh, determined or driven by the size of the fish. And they have, uh, when they catch the fish, they put them in those little holders. The holders are marked with inches, so they make sure they send you the right size. And if he ever, if he ever errs, it's been my experience that when he errs, he errs in the direction of giving you a fish that's a little bit bigger than you ordered, as opposed to a little bit smaller. Now, in the case of an established um, tank full of aggressive fish, you don't want a fish sent to you that's really small because they're going to get ganged up on, right? So, if anything, you want that fish to be a little bit bigger so that uh, they can hold their own in a new situation. So, <clears throat> uh, let's see here. John St. Francis, I feed Sarah, bug bites, and some dried mealworms, live food, etc. Yeah, there you go. There you go. And I bet your fish are nice. They're colored, they're active, they're, they're, their shape is good right and they always go after the food aggressively those are always good signs uh michael it's got it's, it's got to be thousands of gallons it's got to be and and uh, it's set up it's set up with the tanks are set up with slow overflow valves and 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 uh, water that is coming in and so there's a constant turnover of fresh water so uh, water that's coming through um, uh, block filters. So the water that comes in is perfect. And also no tank shares water with any other tank. Every tank has a complete individual system. Hey, James. Hello. Hey, come on over here. Let me say hi. This is James Largo. And, How are you guys uh, doing? And it's been a pleasure staying at his place and um, spending some time with him, his kids, his dogs. And his staff here, it's just been amazing. He, uh, he, he brought me out. And uh, we're going to be doing a one-on-one -on -one where I'm going to ask him some questions so we can get the truth about uh, the life of a fish keeper or a fish provider. It's not as glamorous as you might think. <laughs> no, it's not. It's long 18-hour <laughs> grueling days, about six, seven days a week. I can, I can attribute. We, we almost... Almost. We were this close last night to sleeping in the shop, right? Yeah. We got some big couches here. We almost slept in the shop. I spend many a nights because it's it's safer for me to crash here than to drive a half hour home. That's right. Driving tired is no, no good. Yeah. So, um, for those of you who don't know, James Largo, the founder and owner of, of this uh, incredible facility, and uh, you're, you're going to be hearing a lot more from him in a one-on-one -on -one interview, uh, a behind-the-scenes interview with James. So we're also going to be going to, as I mentioned, the uh, Ocean Floor. Is that the name of it? Ocean Floor? Yes. There's a, another fish store in town that's kind of like an amusement park for fish facilities. So it's in an old ice skating rink. It's just, it's ginormous. So we're going to go visit, we're going to go visit them and, uh, and also look for the video where I went to H2O, the wholesale re, uh, provider of over 2,000 retail shops across the United States. Uh, imagine a Home Depot that is all fish products. I was going crazy. I was going crazy. And we're lucky and, enough to have it here local in Arizona. Yeah, it's right here. We just drove to it. It's like, what, 15 minutes? 15, yeah, 20 15. minutes from here. And, and we're lucky enough to have it here. Yeah, saves them a little bit on shipping. Right. <laughs> okay, folks. So I think we're on the hour here. I want to thank all of you for sitting in and, and especially those who were patient. And I noticed a couple of super chats landed here in the last couple of minutes. Let me give you a big shout out and thank you. And hey, Chris, thank you, my friend, for a nice pillow for a safe flight home. <laughs> thank you. It's not going to be a 3.30 a.m. wake up going home. I'm going home in the mid-afternoon, so that's going to be a lot. Yeah, but tell them the lucky part. I'm saying what? From here, the, the lucky part for us is the airport's less than five minutes. It's across the street, literally. Yeah, I, I could walk, 
walk to the airport. If I, if he got pissed off at me, he could just, I, I'd make it to the <laughs> airport. <laughs> but I called him when my bag was coming off the the uh, conveyor, and he was he was at the airport in five minutes. I've done so much talking through the interviews, and and with Ben here, we've got a crowd already next door, uh, and the food is about up. So if you're local. Please come down and enjoy it with us. And I'm going to stop on. talking because I sound like a horse. Yeah, no, <laughs> no opera singing tonight. The um, I'm going to go next door. I'm going to do a little meet and greet and meet some of you folks. Um, I, I, I'm anxious to do that. And I look forward uh, to getting these other videos out to you and sharing this entire experience with you. Thank you, James. Thank you, You're sir. awesome. You're awesome, buddy. And thank you, Ray. Ray, what a great setup they have. Thank you, Ray. I appreciate that, my friend. And... Uh, Thank you to my wonderful moderators. Big shout out to the uh, to the Patreons for their ongoing support. And um, I think we're going to go ahead and and uh, wrap this thing up so I can go next door. Apparently, there's a little crowd over there waiting to mob me. And uh, hopefully, I don't owe any of them any money. So they'll all be nice to me. <laughs> all right, folks. You are the best. You rock. And uh, always be learning, my friends. And I hope you enjoyed this live stream. I will see you next week from the Fish Room in Nashville, Tennessee. Thank you, my friends. Bye-bye.